So the three goals of this cruise were first to uh, conduct our pressure measurements to look for how the volcano's uh, been inflating and deflating. We came out and after a few days of weather delays, we were able to, to go in and, and accomplish pretty much everything that we had hoped to get done. We were able to collect really high quality pressure data that will tell us about the, the deformation of the volcano surface over the last two years. And now that we've been out here and we've collected instruments and we've driven around with the ROV, we have a lot more data points and we can really start to model what actually happened during the eruption and, and just before the eruption and then after the eruption as well, which is what we're really interested in is all this. The complete story. The second goal was to uh, collect vent fluid and microbiology samples from the same vents and uh, to perform incubation experiments with our fluid sampler. So we did find high temperature microorganisms living in the seafloor at Axial. We found them in the new lava flow about 15 kilometers north of the caldera. So we don't know where they came from, whether they came from the seawater or from below the surface, but they grew and they grew quickly and so that's very exciting to try and figure out how they get there and then how they grow once they're there. Um, first of all, we got an understanding of um, how many different types of organisms are living at the sites that we're visiting. We were also able to replicate our experiments so that we have more accuracy in our experiments. And um, we also were able to do an incubation down in the um, seafloor, which is going to be, uh, I think, revolutionary. Uh, we built this incubator to try to culture microbes on the seafloor with an instrument that's attached to the remotely operated vehicle. To do it on the seafloor was basically to see if there was a difference between what happens on the deck of the ship, where we normally do experiments, and what happens on the seafloor. So usually we don't have the technological capability to do it at the seafloor. So that's the first time we've been able to do that. So that's really exciting. So my samples come from the plume that's coming off of the vent. So it's usually um, 10 to 100 meters above the vent itself. So the water is a lot cooler, um, but there's still a lot of active microbes in that plume um, using the metals and chemicals coming out of the vent. Being able to come out to sea has really given me a really great perspective on the types of research that are conducted out here. I mean, I've taken classes, read papers, but until you're really out here seeing what these great scientists are doing, you don't really have a great idea of what is out there. In addition to the technology of the incubator, we wanted to come out here and do some time series sampling, looking at as many of the hydrothermal vents around the volcano as we could to see how they respond to the latest eruption. So we're just trying to understand how delivery of magma into the volcano and escape of the CO2 and getting into the hydrothermal system that's, that's over it and how that all impacts ocean chemistry and sort of the ecology of the hydrothermal vents. Um, and the third goal was to explore these new lava flows that erupted in April and uh, had never been seen before and or sampled. My work on this cruise includes collecting rocks from the 2015 lava flow to compare with lavas from the 2011 eruption and the 1998 eruption and previous eruptions that, that we've sampled here at Axial Volcano. I'm also working to process the AUV Sentry data to make maps of the lava flows from the 2015 eruption that happened last April and also changes in the volcano that have occurred over the years to compare against our AUV data from previous years. We have great maps of some of the new lava flow in the caldera um, and uh, what's great about that is we can, come, we can basically subtract it from the earlier map and see the uh, thickness of the lava everywhere where it flowed out um, and see all the detail of, of uh, the channels and the collapses and the lobes and the different morphologies in, in the new high resolution bathymetry. So it tells us a lot about how it was in place. 70% of the earth is seafloor and the percentage of that seafloor that we have explored at all for hydrothermal venting is very small. Um, and even smaller are areas of known venting uh, that have been subjected to continuous and repeated measurement. There's still a tremendous amount to learn because we barely scratched the surface. Very small humans in a very big sea. 
we are trying to learn things about the world, the environment in which we live. We're often at the very edge of our capabilities, and that's really the challenge and the excitement of doing all of this. So, Just being able to ask questions about how the ocean works, how volcanoes work, and try to come up with answers. Uh, it's pretty cool to have a job where that's your main assignment, you know, just come up with questions and try to, try to figure out the answers. The amazing thing of going out to sea are the people that you get to work with, and the ideas that you get to exchange, the things that you get to discover, and just seeing the ocean and seeing the wonder of the ocean floor. It's like going to another planet. There is, I think, for everyone on board, a sense of excitement in seeing and discovering things that no one has seen before, but also to take that knowledge and to distribute it, to share it with the rest of the world. Are you ready to make your next forecast? No. <laughs> Not at all. You can't just say no. <laughs> no way. Okay. We just collected the data. The, the volcano just erupted.